I call this sort of stuff kindergarten science. Climate has become a new religion and that people who disagree would be treated as heretics. I think they should be enjoying three hots and a cot at the hay with all the other war criminals. We're not dealing with a scientific issue. We haven't been dealing with a scientific issue now for 15 years. We're dealing with a determined political issue. If there is one issue that is talked about daily in casual and even high-level conversation, it's climate change. The constant fight between sides about whether or not the planet Earth is changing drastically, so drastically and so completely, that we as human beings need to question whether or not we are a sustainable occupant here. Of course, it can be taken by some as being a little overboard. Others believe it is gospel. There's not a single doubt among many people the climate of this planet is changing. The argument's always about how much effect man is having on that change and what we should be doing or not doing to save the place we call home. Our guest is publisher of ClimateDepot.com, also founder of CFACT, a public policy organization that remains skeptical of certain climate issues. They'll be releasing a new documentary, Climate Hustle, on Monday, May 2nd. So we'll begin right there with Mark Morano. Mark, thanks so much for joining us, and let's get right to Climate Hustle. What does this tell us that's different from anything else that we have talked about in the last 10, 15 years? Well, this film brings together some of the top voices in science. We have Nobel Prize winning physicists. We have former United Nations scientists who have turned against the UN now and are criticizing it for distorting the science, for, for essentially becoming a religion. We feature scientists who, who reverse themselves, who one time were believers in global warming and now looked at the evidence, reverse themselves. And then we talk about how they have been vilified by their colleagues and by universities, how they're actually called, and I'm not making this up, heretics. The term you would use in religion, not science. You're deemed a heretic if you don't buy the United Nations and Al Gore's vision of science. So Climate Hustle brings all that together and we bring a lot of humor. This is not a one-sided documentary, Ed. This brings in all the arguments. You get to see the top claims made by Al Gore, the United Nations, and then scientists will dissect and analyze it. And we're only coming May 2nd, one night only, uh, across America in 400 theaters. It's at climatehustle.com. You can buy the tickets. So we're expecting a, this is a huge turnout. Every major city in the U.S. is coming. All right, I'm going to play a little bit of a devil's advocate here for you right now. Let's just go ahead and sure. start by saying Al Gore overboard. United Nations, okay, we get it. Let's toss them aside for a second here. And let's just look at the fact that the globe is warming, that sea levels are rising. I live in South Florida and I can see it every single day. The glaciers are melting. Sea ice is melting. There are more severe tropical storms. Now I get all this and let's stay away from the, the, the heretic religion side of this. Doesn't it just tell us though that something is happening on this planet? Regardless of anything, the, the planet is changing. Don't we have to just embrace that and say that's a definite? Well, yeah, but a few things. First of all, sea level's been rising since the end of the last ice age 10,000 years ago Got or that. more. Got that. So it, it's not accelerating. The key is it's not accelerating. And storms, you know, they're actually on every metric from hurricanes, floods, tornadoes, and droughts. They're either declining trend or no trend. We're at record lows for tornadoes. We're at record low for hurric landfalling hurricanes. So the question is, any changes that you might see in the climate, climate has always changed, and that's one of the key things. The key is what is man's influence. Okay, okay, I'm going to stop you right there for just a second. I got, I'm going to stop you there. Sure. Man's influence. Let's get to that. Look, we know that global temperatures are rising. We, we know there's a lot of NASA's looked at it. We have all the documentation well. sitting here. We're going to show people that here. But let's stop right there. Can we not say that no matter where we go, let's just be sensible about it. Man does have a part in what is happening here. The people who say that man has zero part in any of this, come on, they're wrong, aren't they? Here's how it works. There's hundreds of factors that influence climate. Human emission of carbon dioxide is just one of hundreds. The right. idea that we can tweak at the margins that one factor with UN treaties, EPA, and have it is, is absurd. Now, the answer to your question directly is, yes, humans can have an influence on the climate, but what we're saying in the data that we're presenting and the scientists are reviewing, you cannot distinguish natural climate from man's influence. In other words, if man's having an impact, it's not enough to show up in the temperature record. It's not enough to show up in the storminess. It's not enough to show up in a whole host of things from sea level to polar bears on down the list. But what about now, those yes, who have stats? Are, Again, I, I'm devil's advocate. Sure. What about those who have the stats yeah. that say, yes, it does? Even if it's just a little bit, they're saying that man has a part in it. So isn't it just man does but have a part? Accept it. Embrace it. We're Absolutely. part of it. Yes? 
Yes, if that's what you're asking me, yeah, absolutely. Man has a part. Man has always can always change the climate through deforestation, through land use, through gotcha. e e different types of emissions from industry. But the question is, is it noticeable? And then okay. is it the control knob? What, what the UN and Al Gore have done, they've turned a basic truism, as you're saying. Obviously, we can influence climate, but. Do we control the climate? Is carbon dioxide a control knob of the climate? And geologic history of the Earth absolutely defies that. We've had ice ages and warmer temperatures with CO2 many times higher than today. It, it is not the control knob. Absolutely. And, that is where the, and, and I, and I just want to make a point here, Mark. I'm not trying to attack you on this, but what I'm just trying to point out is the sure. other side of this that people will always bring up here, because that's part of all this. I want to make sure that people see this and understand this, so please don't take it that way. I want to make sure that we're looking at this from both sides here. i got 45 seconds left. Then in the film, then and what you found out, what do we need to do from here to make things better? Well, interesting. We feature politically left scientists who endorsed Obama, voted for Al Gore, and they literally say the global warming has hijacked the environmental movement. So if you care about environmentalism, and one of the things are clean air, clean water, particularly in the developing world, you, they're angry that global warming has hijacked the whole movement and we're focused on a trace essential gas in the atmosphere. I think people need to be aware that whether they believe in global warming or not, the re legislation and so-called solutions are happening. EPA, United Nations Treaty just signed last week. Uh, and so what's happening is climate hustle is going to open up this dialogue and hit Americans with the facts, and they're going to see the climate activists in their own words and hear distinguished scientists Good. reacting. We present it with a lot of humor. May 2nd, one night only, climatehustle.com. I want to make sure people get there because, quite frankly, Mark, I'm all about looking at things from both sides here and making sure that people get both sides sure. of the argument. The website, again, is climatedepot.com. Mark Morano, thanks so much for joining us. Next up, no sympathy for Johnny Manziel. None for his parents, none for those who can't handle a little responsibility. It's in Telling It Like It Is, next on The Hardline.